Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. Now that gives me a great joy to invite you to be part of this program today, uh, especially as we are beginning a new series, I believe that will benefit your life in a very personal way. I want to talk to you today on building your inner man. Building your inner man. Now that's something of a unique subject because we all need inner strength. We face a lot of challenges in our lives and this teaching will definitely bless you. Let's right now dive into and see what God has for us. Building your inner man. Every day as we go through life, there are things that we face. It might be in the work front, challenges. It might be in the family, about um, children, their upbringing and the finances, the debt, and then the problems that, is, that are caused by others or by situations. To face all these and still move on in life, and not just to move on, but to emerge victorious, you need the inner strength. And that is why we're going to see this series, and uh, it's all about building up your inner strength, inner man. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, Paul prays a beautiful prayer, Apostle Paul, and part of that prayer is, in verse 16, that he would grant you, that is God would grant you, you means you and I, according to the riches of his glory. So God has riches. He's a rich God. He's a super abundant God, the king of all the universe. To be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Paul prays to the church at Ephesus. His desire for them was that they would be strengthened. My friend, my brother, my sister, God wants you to be strengthened by his spirit in your inner man. Praise God. Maybe you feel so low today emotionally or downcast because of whatever that's been happening in this season of your life. And God is right there. He, he's just reaching out to you and say, I want you to be strong inside. Because much of our victory is dependent on the strength inside of us than even what we see outside. Hallelujah. Maybe sometimes even when someone feels um, a kind of infirmity physically or the situations are hard, when the inner man is strong, then they are able to forge ahead, break through the barriers, emerge victorious, accomplish what God has concerning their lives. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about you. That is you. God wants you to become strong so much in your inner man that you will forge ahead no matter whatever stands on your way and you will break through and you will emerge victorious and still accomplish the purpose of God in your life. Somebody said an amen. Now, inner man, what does inner man stand for? Basically, it, you know, it talks about uh, what the part of us that is not visible to the human eye. 
let me let's go to second corinthians chapter 4 and let me read to you from verse 16 therefore we do not lose heart look at that look at that therefore we do not lose heart i tell you you will not lose heart i tell you you will not be discouraged I tell you, you're not giving up. I tell you, you're not quitting. And that, that's why this program is on your way. And God's reaching out to you even right now. And then he says, St. Paul, St. Paul, Apostle Paul says, Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So he talks about two men, or two men. One is the outward man, which is the physical man, the physical appearance, that which is um, seen by the eye, the physical eye, and that is the body. So he says, even though our outward man is perishing, because in, in the same in the same chapter, Paul talks about the kind of hardship that they had to go through for the cause of Christ and serving him. And he, he, he tells it about, uh, he tells about that in verse eight, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. My, my, my. Amazing. So he says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. So physically, they are under attack. Emotionally, they are under attack. Or well, perplexed. Now, perplexion that does not happen in, in, in the body. It happens in the mind. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Again, persecution, the body and mind. Struck down, but not destroyed. Physically hit, hit in life. But not, not, not destroyed. Why? Why? Now, this is the outer man going through all these hard times. But the inner man, he talks, you know, in verse 16, that is renewed by day by day, by day is what is not seen. And that is your mind and your spirit, your mind and your spirit. So you need to always remember that, you know, I, I keep on uh, giving this equation to myself. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. Body is that which is the outer man. So spirit and soul. And the mind is part of the soul. The mind is the power to analyze. So spirit and soul is the inward man. So Paul writes, in the inward man will renew day by day. A mind is renewed day by day. Why? Because the spirit of God, he strengthens us by his might in the inward man hallelujah praise god god wants you to be strengthened in your spirit by his holy spirit that nothing nothing can literally crush you like what paul says you may be hard pressed on every side but you will not cr get crushed because you're strong inside your inner man is strong. You may feel to have a perplexing situation, but you are not in despair, meaning you're not giving up. You're not a quitter. You continue to forge. You may be persecuted, but you don't feel that, oh, I'm abandoned, I'm forsaken. I'm lost. No, 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 no. You're not lost. Why? There's strength in your inner man. And then even when you feel struck down, you say, I'm not getting destroyed. No one, 
No power on earth or anywhere can destroy me. Why? My inner man is strong by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Amen. So now, now we're going to step into something very precious. So how are we strengthened in the inner man? You know, what, what is the strength or how, what's the way that we become strong in our inner man? It's very, very simple. You know, when, when someone gives their heart to God, or heart to Christ, when someone receives Christ in their heart, when someone puts their faith upon Christ, something very, very, very powerful happens. We'll go to John, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. Oh, this is so beautiful. And it's verse 12. Jesus tells of what happens when you put your trust on him. I'm going to read, um, you know, from verse 11 onwards. He came to his own. That is, Jesus came to the Jewish people and his own did not receive him. We, we know that most of the Jews, they... They rejected him. They rejected him as the Messiah. But verse 12, But as many as received him, everyone who has received Christ as the Lord of their lives, meaning those who have put their faith on Christ, to them he gave the right. The right means the authority, the power to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Now, th that is an explanation of to receive Christ means to believe in the name of Jesus, in the person of Jesus. So the power to become children of God, it simply means that you are born into the family of God as his child. Now, in other words, you are born out of God. When you, when you believe in Jesus, you are born through God. You're born from God. Oh, my, 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 my. This is powerful. You are, I tell you, you are a product of God. Now, that doesn't happen in your body. When you put your trust in Christ, it happens in your spirit. Your spirit is born of God. I'm going to go show you scriptures. You know, we're just talking about the way how you can have strength in your inner man, which can actually make you a overcomer. Okay, let's, let's continue to read John 1 and verse 13. Who were born not of blood... Now that is, being born of the blood is the first birth that you born to an earthly mother. Nor of the will of the flesh, again, earthly father. Nor of the will of man, that is the earthly parents. But of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are born of God. I mean, we are born from God, through God. And that happens in your inner man when you put your faith on Christ. Jesus continues to amplify this reality, this truth. John chapter 3. Oh, we're learning something. This is going to bless your life, my friend. This is going to bless your life. John chapter 3. Here is Nicodemus. Um, elderly a teacher a pharisee of jewish law and uh, he sees the power of god working through jesus and and comes to uh, jesus in the night 
afraid of his colleagues and Jesus tells him in verse 3 Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again the margin says born from above in other words born of God you know what we read in John 1 13 born of God God is your father you know believing in Jesus your spirit man your your spirit you are born of god praise the lord hallelujah uh, he cannot see the kingdom of god then again jesus still more makes it clear in verse 5 jesus answered most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit now being born of water is ephesians 5 26 the water is the word of god when you heard the gospel, now gospel is God's word, and you believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit does a mighty work in your spirit. You know, the word of God is the seed of God. Is You know, seed is a mango seed produces a tree bearing mango fruits. Uh, 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 the seed of a lion, a lion produces a lion cub through the lioness. So the word of God, the gospel is the seed of God. And when it fell in your heart, the Holy Spirit literally worked in your spirit and transformed your spirit, man, into a new creation. That's what it says. John 3, 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the family of God. All right. So a kingdom of lions is a family of lions. Right. A, a garden of mango trees is a family of mango trees. So when you believed in the word, when you responded to the gospel, when you do that, you your spirit is born of God, meaning your spirit is, can I tell, tell it this way? Your spirit is transformed. Hallelujah. A technical name of the present times is your, your spirit is cloned. Oh, hallelujah. Your spirit is cloned to become. All right, a child of God, meaning you're born into the family of God, carrying his attributes, his characteristic. You know, when a child is born, people say the nose is like the dad's, the ear is like the mom's. Obviously, it can't be like someone else because the seed of the father been sown into the mother and the child is born. So through the word and the spirit, you are born of God. And this is salvation. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Verse 6, he says, Jesus says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now that is the physical birth. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That is the spiritual birth which happens when you put your faith on Christ. And verse 7, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now that is the born again experience. You are born from above. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now how does your spirit man look like when you are born of God? It looks like the Father. It looks like God himself and the life that you have in your spirit is no more human life. I'm telling you, your spirit man has the God life. Oh, are you excited? I'm excited. Your spirit man has the God life, the God kind of life. It has the essence of God. 
it has the attributes of God. Praise the Lord. You are transformed in your spirit into a species of God. Amen. Somebody shouted an amen. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 5. This is awesome. This is awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Was 17. Was 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Look at that. In Christ means anyone, anyone, anybody who has put their faith on Jesus, who has received Christ. He is a new creation. Now, where is the new creation? Not just physically. No. It begins in the spirit. In the inner man, in the invisible man, the inner man, I already said, it's the spirit and the soul together. But again, when you receive Christ, your spirit is transformed into a new creation. Hallelujah. Now, how does that new creation look like? Paul continues to say, all things have passed away from that spirit. All old things, meaning the, the old nature is the Adamic nature. Because from Adam, we all come physically. And the old nature, the sinful nature, has passed away. Behold, amazing, behold. That, that, that means, look there. Look into your spirit. Look into your, if you can look you know, behold means look. If you can see with the eyes of faith, all things have become new. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say most of the things. It says all things. I mean, from the crown of the head to the soles of your feet, of your spirit, man, it's completely become new. It has a new nature. Whose nature is that? God's nature. Whose nature, whose likeness? Christ likeness. That is your spirit man. Praise God. What an awesome thing to get saved. <laughs> now, even when you realize uh, this, it gives you a lot of strength, inner strength. I'll just explain it to you in a moment. First, let's read verse 18, the first part of it. Now, all things are of God. So, so Paul writes, behold, all things have become new. So, this all things, that is every part of your spirit man. You know, your spirit man has a few parts in it. It has the conscience. Uh, it has um, the intuition. It has what is called the union with God. Amen. So all these things reside uh, in your spirit. The intuition the union with God, the conscience, right? All these things are in your spirit, man. Now, all these things are of God. Now, these things have been reproduced, transformed into the likeness of God, meaning the, the consciousness in your spirit is you feel like you are a child of God. You are. God conscious, rather situation conscious. You're God conscious. God is a victor. God is not a failure. God is a success. God is not a quitter. God is healing and health personified. He is not a sick God. God is powerful. He's not a weak God. He's almighty, in fact. God is all wise, he is not a folly God. No. God is wealthy, the king of all the universe. He is not a poor God. And your conscious, you know, your consciousness has become that way because all things in your spirit are of God. It is from God. Hallelujah. I believe you're excited about this. I believe this is bringing strength in your spirit, man. And, and you feel so strong. You feel so toned. 
And that mountain, whatever had been like a mountain before you, now it's just like nothing. It's like a small pebble, a small grain of sand. Because you know that in your spirit, you are born of God. All things are of God. Hallelujah. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so this happens when you put your faith on Christ. Praise God. And when, 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 when Paul says all things are of God, the spirit man receives certain things. Because, you know, it's like um, when a child is born, all part of the child is from the parents. The nose, as I said, like the dad. The ear, like the mouth, uh, that uh, athletic nature, like the dead. Maybe that patience and calmness, like the mom. That height, like the dead. Maybe that way of being soft and gentle in speech, like the mom. All things are of the parents for the child, right? Not just the physical part, but also the attitude-wise, the genes, the DNA, right? So when you're born again and your spirit is born of God, every part of that spirit man exactly resembles like God. Hallelujah. That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work. That is why salvation is not a, you know, light experience. No, no, it's the greatest, greatest, greatest experience, right? So all things, you know, we can, we, we're going to talk about this all things in the days to come. What are all the things that are from God manifest in our spirit man? Because that's going to give you power. So now we are going to pray. You know, we're going to continue this teaching in the weeks to come. I tell you, this is going to be a blessing to you. I tell you, something great is going to happen. You're going to be built up in your inner man. Are you ready for that? I know you are. But if you have not yet had the experience of receiving Christ, which is step number one, to be born again, and your inner man, your inner spirit, to be born of God, to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, to experience the God kind of life. You know, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10 verse 10, God wants you to have that life. All you need to do is just pray this prayer after me in faith. Speak it out, say, dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you. I receive my forgiveness. I surrender myself. Be Lord of my life. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to give you the good news that you are born again. Your spirit is born again. Because the word says, as many as have received him, meaning those who have believed in his name, Jesus Christ, they are born of God. They have been given the power to become children of God. You are part of God's family. Welcome to the family of God, your spirit has the life of God in it, in, and you're strong in your inner man. Praise God. If you've done that prayer, do write to us and let us know how this has been blessed. This program has been a blessing to you, and we would glorify God together. Now I pray in Jesus' name, Father, everyone who's listened to your word, received your word, and prayed the prayer, I pray. Your power will take over their life. May their spirit be full of God consciousness that every mountain before them 
will flatten out by the power at work in them because they are a new creation. God cannot be overcome. They cannot be overcome. As God cannot be defeated, they cannot be defeated. As God cannot be a victim, they can no longer be a victim to their past or anything that is harassing them. I declare and decree their freedom and liberation now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for it is done. Amen. Praise God. I'm so excited that we connected today. I'm sure you are too. May God bless you. Do write to us. I'm looking forward to hear, hearing from you about how this program was a blessing. And I'll see you next week. Until then, God bless.